Several years ago, the Horn of Africa was stable. Somalia was prosperous and peaceful. Ethiopia produced a lot of food and experienced peace and tranquility. So did Eritrea, Djibouti, Sudan, Burundi and many other African nations. But that was then. Today, as a result of political strife, drought and armed conflict, especially in the Horn of Africa countries, many people are forced to flee and seek asylum in relatively peaceful countries. Majority of the fleeing population are usually women and children, who often become victims of abuse and suffering during flight and even in the asylum country. However, in the dry lands of the Dab in Kenya, something different has been happening in the world's largest refugee camp. A flower has been blooming in the desert. This is Ifo 2, one of the five camps in the larger Dadaab refugee camp setup. In this enclosure is a child friendly space. Here, children can forget their heartbreaking ordeals and just be children once again. As they engage in these activities, some of the children are taken through. Uh, and directive play, play therapy where we observe the various behaviors of the children. Uh, there are those who may, may appear to be withdrawn, others may display aggressive tendencies. Uh, these are usually referred to the pediatric counselor where they are taken through further counseling. Through partnership with Handicap International, the infrastructure in the child-friendly spaces has been constructed in a disability-friendly manner, therefore allowing children living with disability who would otherwise be hidden away from the public eye to have fun, enjoy the facilities and actively participate in children's activities just like their able-bodied counterparts. It is said that education is key. However, majority of the refugee children are faced with imminent disruption of their education. So the first zero will come back. Yeah. Yeah. Furthermore, the education system in the host country is often different, hence absorption in the host school thus becomes a challenge. However, for the refugee children in the Dab, there is hope. We have another group, a special group of those children who initially were in school while they were in Somali. But then when they came up here, because there are, there are differences with our education system, they cannot be absorbed directly into our education system. So we take them through what we call catch-up classes, where they, there is accelerated learning, and those ones who are good enough, they will just be transitioned to our normal school education system. Samira Abdikadir got her first child when she was only 13 years old. That was before she fled to Kenya, following the protracted armed conflict in Somalia. In Dadaab, it is not unusual to come across girls like Samira, who get children when they are not yet ready to be parents. The sad part is that most of these children are as a result of forced marriages and defilement cases. Such child mothers face a lot of challenges, including stigmatization as a result of leaving as unmarried girls as well as how to take care of themselves and their children, considering that they are both children. Save the Children has been working with the girl mothers to empower them with skills that would enable them to live a positive life. They are supported through the girl mothers forums where they give hope and support to each other through the monthly mentorship sessions. <laughs>
take a look at this bundle of joy. His name is Mohammedek Abdi. He is two weeks old. This is his mother, Fatuma. A few days ago, Abdi and Fatuma's stories were completely different. Abdi had been thrown away in a dump site in Dagahale, one of the dub's five camps by a mother who did not want him. But thanks to Save the Children's Foster Parents Initiative, he got a new loving mother and a home. The Foster Parent Initiative is a rigorous process that aims at vetting potential parents for children who arrive in camps unaccompanied, separated or those that live in abusive families. The foster parents are trained on several aspects including children's rights, positive discipline as well as on vocational skills in order to be able to adequately provide for the children entrusted to their care. The foster parents' approach was to, to really keep the unaccompanied minor separated children within family, family care. Instead of them being on their own and being exposed to a lot of protection concerns, it became an approach for, to, have, to just have protection and care within a family setup. Through increased trainings for children on children's rights, life skills training and involvement of children on issues affecting them, they are increasingly playing a much more active role in making their individual lives better as well as that of their peers. We are trained about general rights, how to report the, uh, the children and abuse cases, whom to report and where to report. It is Friday afternoon. A group of boys and girls have gathered around a radio. One of their favorite children's programs by children is airing. Through the use of child-to-child -child approach, the Desert Flower strategy has been reaching more and more children with key messages of transformation. The program has partnered with local radio stations, which air the children's